everyone. Happy Wednesday. I guess they call it hop day. <laughs> 20th of March, 2019. The entrance of thy word giveth life, light. This is a message that we have heard of him. Declare unto you that God is light, and him in him is no darkness at all. Good morning, Sam Rose Davis. Welcome aboard. God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Good morning, E.J. E. Joseph, Joseph E.J., and good morning, Penny Beloit. Welcome aboard. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. Ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. You were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord, walk as children of light. Ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Good morning, uh, Brother Solomon, and good morning, Leon Kennedy. Welcome aboard. I've just read from Psalm 119, verses 130, 1 John 1, 5, 2 Corinthians 4 and 6, John 1, 1, 4, 1 John 1, 7, Psalm 119.11, John 15.3, Ephesians 5.8, and 1 Peter 2.9. We've talked before about the aspect of light versus darkness. Light versus darkness. Jesus said he was the light of the world. And in him dwelleth no darkness. We are told that in Good Morning, uh, Don Clay, welcome aboard this morning. We are told that in that city, there's no need of the light of the sun, for Jesus himself will be the light. Now, uh, Satan always has his counterfeit, doesn't he? We are told that in the Bible that he comes as an angel of light seeking whom he may devour. But the true light, the true light shines on the counterfeit light. He's a counterfeit. You can always tell the counterfeit by looking at the original, right? And when we look at Christ, we can see the counterfeit. Jesus Christ is pure. Jesus Christ is righteous he's without sin and he is full of grace and truth the word of god tells us he's full of grace and truth you know sometimes we need a flashlight in the night to find something we're looking for and we go and dig out the flashlight and find that the batteries have run down <laughs> It's good to know that Jesus Christ's light is everlasting. It's all He's always charged all the way up. I entitled this Light versus Darkness. The sun brings light to our world and brightens our path and gives us heat. The Son of God gives a spiritual light to our soul to make our path a joyful retreat. Darkness in the middle of the night is absent of any light. Satan is full of darkness and leaves the sinner with his plight. The sunshine gives our plants and flowers life anew. The Son of God does the same thing to our spirits too. Darkness brings the chill and hides our view. Satan in his kingdom does the same thing too. The sun always comes up after the storm to take away the darkness, keeping us from harm. The Son of God has shined his light into our hearts and gives us peace that passeth understanding, never to depart. 
Well, I'm glad that we have the light of the world. I'm glad that he is the light of the world. And we can be comforted regardless of what we're going through by realizing that his light has shined in our hearts to give us the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And so let us remember that he is the great light in that, need, in that city where they need no sun. He is the light. Well, I want to encourage everyone this morning and it's not an easy road we're walking on. You know, everything's not coming up roses. <laughs> and I've often told people, even roses have thorns. If you go to pick a rose, you're probably going to get stuck. <laughs> I love roses, but I don't love the thorns. But you can't have the roses without the thorns. You can't have um, redemption and salvation without persecution. The Bible tells us that all those that are in Christ will suffer persecution. Jesus Christ suffered and laid his life down freely for us. No one suffered more than Christ. No one has ever suffered more than Christ. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. The Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. I've often um, thought about how that certain people go through things that I've never experienced. <clears throat> and yet it seems as if, especially uh, if they are in Christ, how that God gives them the grace to go through tremendous suffering and pain. Oh, I feel like I've gone through a few things. But in comparison to some people, in fact, have you ever seen someone uh, who is multiply handicapped where their body is dismembered? Maybe they were born with no feet or no ears or no arms. And it's really hard for us to look upon that. It's hard for us to look upon those who have been born in a deformed state, or maybe someone has been in a horrible car wreck and they've been paralyzed. You know, we think, why? Why would, you know, why would this happen? You know? I've had people email me and say, I can't understand why this is happening to me. Can you help me? And all I can do is take them back to scripture and try to be kind and empathetic as much as I can be. That's all I can do. I don't have any pad answers for suffering. I don't have any pad answers for these things. It's beyond our understanding. But God is glorified in all things. And if we're in Christ, he tells us that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Many people have been a shining light in a very dark place when they have proclaimed God's grace and mercy 
when they have been born in those states of deformity and handicap situations or when they've gone through great sufferings. What a testimony to God's grace for someone to proclaim his love. I'm glad that God has given us his word. It has all the answers. If we will search his word, it has all the answers, does it not? And one of these days, there's going to be a great reckoning. The Bible says the first shall be last and the last shall be first. I don't know what all that means, but I do know this, that there is equity with God and his people. He is a just God. He is a holy God. He is a righteous God. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive glory and honor and power and wisdom. He hath created all things, and by him all things consist. Good morning, James Harrison. Welcome aboard this morning. I'm glad Jesus Christ has finished the work that his father sent him to do. Well, I want to end with a couple things this morning. I hope you don't mind me reading these to you. Um, you know, we, we need to be strengthened. We need to be edified. We need to be comforted. We hear enough bad news every day, you know. A lot of it is fake news, but we hear a lot of bad news every day. But sometimes we need to hear some good news, some good news. Looking back in history, we see events unfold, and the greatest story in history is the greatest story ever told. It's not just a novel. No, this story is true, how God sent his son to die to redeem his chosen few. Praise and thanksgiving we give to the son, who in the courts of heaven with the three in one made provision for this sinner through his blood, the work is done. The plan was determined between the Trinity, and this great story in history would be a certainty. God would redeem his people, a ransom he would pay, Christ would be slain on Calvary in history on that day. You see, Scripture tells us that he was slain in eternity before the world began. It was predetermined. Yes, it was his master plan. Praise and thanksgiving we give to the Son, who in the courts of heaven with the three in one made provision for this sinner through his blood. The work is done. Well, you know what? I want to thank everyone for joining us this morning. And you are all in my prayers. Prince Ellison Bayadai, Joseph E.J., Brother Solomon, Sam Rose Davis, Penny Beloit, Leon Kennedy, Don Clay, James Harrison, and all the rest who I cannot see currently on my desktop here, welcome aboard and may the good Lord be with you. Keep me in your prayers and my family in your prayers as well. And realize that underneath us are his everlasting arms. I want to end this um, today with this thought. Growing up, Jesus was known as the carpenter's son, helping his father work with wood that Christ had created from trees that he had made. You ever think about that? The very, the very wood that Christ was helping Joseph with 
was the trees that he had made. Jesus Christ made all things, including those trees. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. All things were created by him. Even the trees Joseph the carpenter worked with as a part of his trade. Jesus is the greatest carpenter that ever lived, building an eternal kingdom with his hands. Not with wood and stubble is this kingdom made, but with the precious blood of Jesus when he freely laid his life down on Calvary for all of God's elect, the ones that the Father for him did select. The carpenter's son was the greatest builder that could ever be, giving eternal life for all of the elect family. May the good Lord be with you today in a special way. Keep you in his peace and joy. God bless.